who at the governor's office did you speak to before you resigned? Well, a couple of days before, um, we met with, I believe it was Jeff Oldham, who would have been at that time the governor's general counsel. I believe James Sullivan, who, is, who was at that time deputy general counsel. And I believe the chief of staff, Louis Sines, was in the meeting as well. Was anyone else in the meeting? Other than myself, and I believe Mr. Bangert and Mr. Brickman. I believe that's all. Did you talk to Mr. Hodge? No, he no. wouldn't have been in that meeting. He no. wasn't at the governor's office at that time. Right. Did any of you, the group that, that you know of, talk to Mr. Hodge? Not that I'm aware of. You know who I'm talking about, don't you? I know who Daniel Hodge is. Yeah, he was at one time the governor's chief of staff, but by this time, Louis, Louis Sines was chief right. of staff. Daniel Hodge is a lobbyist? I, that's my understanding. Sure. Why did y'all refer to yourselves as a cool kids club? I don't recognize that. You don't recognize it? I don't. Okay. Um, go back, Eric, to AG Exhibit 170. Your, te your testimony is that you folks, you, you eight folks, never referred to yourselves as the Cool Kids Club? My testimony is I, I don't recall me ever using that phrase. Okay, how about the others? I, sitting here right now, no. Okay. Um, do you recall ever being sent a text like, getting fired will make you a cool kid? Eric, go to Brinkman 203. Brickman 203, and this is exhibit. Okay, do you see the text there I'm referring to? Being fired will make you a cool kid. I, Mr. Busby, I see that, but I don't know if I, am I on that exchange? I don't, the message at the top, if someone could highlight that. I do have my, gla I do have my glasses on, but I'm trying to see it. Yeah, I, I don't see my name there. I don't think I was on that exchange. Don't think so. No, after I left, I don't think so. Now, when did you find out about the second referral? When did you finally find out that, you know what, when I went to the FBI and I was telling them that this guy was subpoenaing uh, documents that had nothing to do with the referral, when did you find out that the documents that were being subpoenaed actually had everything to do with the second referral? When did you find that out? Mr. Busby, sitting here today, I don't, I don't recall when. Okay, let's look at same exhibit, Brickman 202. Y'all read about it in the news, didn't you? Well, again, sir, I don't think I'm on the, I don't think I'm on this text message. Okay, well, just look at the text message I'm referring to. This is about alleged second complaint. Interesting. You see that language? Um, could you highlight it for me, please? Eric, could. Eric. See that language? They're referring to a news article, and they're for the first time learning that, in fact... Mr. Kamick had been sent a second referral directly from the DA's office, and that's what the subpoena regarded. Is that about the time you learned about this? Again, I don't have a memory of learning it from, from that. I mean, you guys were alarmed, you said. I think the word you used was, we were alarmed that this kid, as you called him, had sent a subpoena to a bank, and you believe that subpoena had nothing whatsoever to do with whether the FBI had violated Mr. Paul's rights. Do you have the second referral? You're going to see it in a minute. What did it, what did it relate to? That may no. help me. Just a second. 
I'm going to help you. Don't worry. I'm not going to. No, my objection is, Your Honor, he's twice, maybe seven times, I've, re I've resisted objecting because the witness, quite frankly, is handling him so well. However, he's, <laughs> he's now cross-examined him about an email that he's not, or text messages he's not on. He doesn't know anything about. Now he's going to cross-examine him about a second referral, which the testimony is clear. He never saw and doesn't know. He's therefore asking, give it to me. And before you ask me questions about it. So I object to him being asked about documents he knows not only nothing about, but is not part of. I'm trying to find out what was in his mind when he resigned and when he went to the FBI about what he didn't know. And I'm asking him about why the alarm. And the alarm is, Your Honor, I think he's told us that he didn't know about the second referral. And I'm trying to figure out when he learned about it. I, don't, I think the, world, the law is clear. He shouldn't be questioned about documents that he has not seen in this situation knows nothing about. I mean, he just said, I never saw the second referral. I don't know anything about it. And now he wants to, to sort of lead him through as he gets to do on cross about things having to do with documents he hasn't seen. So I, I object to that being inappropriate. And sustained. And that's the whole point. You didn't know about the second referral, did you? I did not. Right. And so you went to the FBI thinking this kid, as y'all called him, as you called him, should not be subpoenaing banks, right? I did think that. Yeah. But you now know that if he was charged by the DA's office of Travis County to investigate big bid rigging, that that would be, in fact, something that he might subpoena, right? I actually don't know that. You don't know? I do not, I do not okay. know it. And since we're on the subject... Let's look at, because you, you know now there were two referrals, okay. right? You know that. I think I know that because I've reviewed the internal report at one time. 